This is a Radio Shack uh, Science Fair transistor radio. And this is one of the first successful repair jobs, or maybe the... It's not, I'm not going to say it's the only successful repair job I've ever done on a transistorized product, but this has been the, the most complex problem I've ever fixed on one. When I tried this out, first of all, the antenna coil had got loose and the ferrite bar got loose, so I put some zip ties on the ferrite bar to get it back in place. Then when I powered it up, there was no audio at all. So what I started out doing was to first hook up the signal tracer. I've got the signal tracer active here, and I've got the uh, signal generator active too, so I introduced a test signal from the signal generator and see if I could pick it up and and I could I had the had the signal generator hooked up to the volume control but I still wasn't getting any audio so I placed all the capacitors in it just to make sure I didn't have any bad electrolytics and uh, that didn't seem to change it although this is I'm sure at least 35 year old electrolytics so I'm glad that I went ahead and did that anyway but then I found here that the, the problem was with this little transformer. This is an interstage transformer between this driver transistor and these two push-pull output transistors. And I thought back to a Rollin PA amplifier I'd worked on, which was a tube type amp, and it also had a bad driver uh, transformer in it. And this serves to couple the single phase output from this transistor into a 180 degree out of phase uh, signal that's 180 degree out of phase for each of the output transistors. And when I, uh, I took a capacitor and put it, put it from the volume control circuit over to the output circuit, I was able to get a little bit of sound. And uh, that's after I uh, I figured out that the RF and oscillator portions were working and the IF stages were working okay. So then what I did, I, as a test, I used this transformer to substitute for the primary inductance in the driver circuit. And then I used a capacitor to couple the signal into the output stage. So it's not really going to be push-pull, but it actually seems to sound pretty good. I may just try to find some kind of an inductor or transformer, maybe a little bit smaller than this, that I can use in here as a substitute and just run it as a single-ended output. Because this isn't a high fidelity, real high fidelity, high, high quality sound unit anyway. But it seems to sound just fine. Although I think I really would like to eventually get the circuit working properly. But one thing I was able to do using the signal tracer is you can use it to uh, do an alignment job and use the tuning eye to help guide you in the alignment. So I've got this hooked up to the output of the driver, uh, audio driver transistor, and I'm going to turn it on now. Let's see if we can pick up a signal. So now I'm going to see if I can, got to make sure that I'm tuned into the signal okay. Okay, there's the signal. So you can see the tuning eye is closed. Now if I adjust the IF transformers, what I'll do is I'll back down the gain on the on this a little bit. Let me back down the volume control just so it's not so annoying. I'll turn up the gain so I get a tuning eye reading there. It may be a little hard to see the tuning eye, but I'm going to adjust an IF can here. And you can see, maybe able to see the tuning eye opening and closing. It's a little bit, okay, so you can sort of see it there. So you notice that, okay, there it's going out of alignment. Now we're going back into alignment, and there it went out again. So I'm going to give this a little bit of an alignment touch up with the, uh, with the, uh, signal generator here. So we'll start at the input IF and we'll just tune it up here so that it's showing the most deflection. Okay, it looks like about there. 
Now we'll do the second eye of. And that was about right. And uh, now we'll do the third eye of. And it looks like right about there. It's probably right. And we're using, you need to use a fairly weak signal. And if the signal appears too strong, just reduce the gain on the oscillator or move the antenna wire away. So now I've got got the uh, got the trick circuit functioning here. I'm going to turn off the signal tracer and disconnect it from the circuit. Now I'll just try and tune in some radio stations. The, the, the better, the better it felt. Yeah. The first time I mentioned it, I had a, um, a, a, a couple of more controversial slides in it. I think the camera is generating interference when I get it too close. Let me back the camera away from it. Five ninety nine degrees. Let's hope it stays there. The winds out of the south at ten to twenty. Tonight, Thursday night, mostly clear skies. Lows will be into the lower seventies. The winds out of the south at about ten to twenty. And then for your Fridays, you start that long Fourth of July weekend. Sunny skies, a high of ninety four. The winds out of the southeast at ten to twenty. I'm CBS Seven Weather Director Craig Stewart with your Permian Basin forecast. Stay tuned here on 550 AM for Coast to Coast Overnight. News Talk 550 KCRS. The one thing you can always count on. Sean Hannity is back on the radio. Triumph also represents the triumph of self that is America today. Want to give the players? They they lump in the whole thing. The debt, the depreciation, the interest. It's the same thing that we've kind of learned with the NFL. They get this. Even though I had to kind of modify this circuit, it really doesn't sound all that bad just for a little speaker like that. So I'm going to try and see if I can find some kind of a a choke or transformer I can put in here. I maybe could even put this one in here just temporarily to sort of set it back inside the case. And we'll use that capacitor to couple the signal into the output stages. But yeah, it turned out the problem on this was a uh, was a bad uh, bad interstage transformer. <laughs> 